Is a hands macaw a good starter parrot? Hi, I'm Kaylin, the author of The Parable Farm. In this video, Emerald, my hands macaw, and I are answering a question about whether or not a hands macaw is a good starter parrot. Well, here's the thing. I don't believe in absolutes. I think that a lot is going to depend on a parrot's demeanor and on the person who is going to be adopting, with them, adopting them. I am a strong believer in finding the right word for you so that you guys click. Kiss. Kiss. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. I know, those are pretty wings. She's showing her wings off for us. Um, so I'm a, a really big believer that you should get the right pair so that you guys click together and you're very happy. And you're both happy. If you haven't had parrots before, I think that you need to realize that parrots are a little different than most other pets, like a cat, a dog, a hamster, a fish. And if you're comfortable with the differences, then um, I don't think starting with a hands macaw is a bad idea, but I do think there are some parrots that aren't going to be as much of a change. So one of the changes between having an exotic pet like a parrot and like Emerald versus having a cat or a dog is the noise level. My parrots compete with me. The minute that I'm on the phone or that I'm making a video, they know and they get loud, as you can see <laughs> by Emerald. Um, so, when you get a puppy, they bark and bark sometimes, but you could train it out of them. They grow older, they mellow, you know, it changes. This young lady is 12 years old, aren't you? And you could see that she's just as loud as ever. Parrots are loud. I think it's because when they're flying around and they're in a jungle or wherever they're living, they need to be able to hear each other over vast differences. Hey, sweetie, what you doing? So their voices need to carry, and they do. That also means that it's not something where when they're older, they don't need to be as loud. At night, they're really quiet. Parrots take a nap during the day, and then when the sun sets, they really get quiet, and they calm down, and they're... I should do videos at night, except my parents would be asleep. Um, and they're, you know, they become like little statues, little gargoyles, right? They just get in their position, they quiet down, they don't move around a whole lot, and they're really mellow and really quiet. But during the day, that's just not their demeanor, that's just not what a parrot is, and it just doesn't change. Like, Emerald, um, what's your lifespan, 40, 50 years? And... It's just not going to change, like, until she's really dying, she's just going to be this loud, or unless she's sick. So that's the first thing. Like, I can't tell you how much the noise is a thing. Sometimes on some of my videos, people are like, you know, it's really distracting all the noise. It's hard to hear you. So I do have a microphone, and hopefully that's helping. But this is what it's like to have a parent. It, it can be hard to have a conversation. It can be hard to be heard. And so, you know, positive, negative, good, bad, right, or wrong, that's sort of a good representation of what it's like. And so you have to be okay with that if you're going to take on a parrot. Now, if you start with a parrot lad or a budgie, they're going to be a lot quieter. Their sound level just isn't as loud. It's, it's, not, as, <laughs> it's not as high. Um, and, of course, there's also... There's also some variation between, just simply between, there's also some variation between one, from one parrot to another, like one hand from a to another, they can be different. Another thing that you have to really get used to, if you have a fish or a cat or a dog, you, know, you put food out, their dry food out for them once a day, refill it, wash their bowl, wash their water, um, you know, my mom used to have a cat, and I think the water was on the counter, so it's like they just threw it in with the dishwasher, got out a new bowl, almost didn't even notice it. Whereas with parrots, 
They will often get their water dirty, so you generally have to clean their water at least once a day, but twice is not unheard of by any means. I know, but you need to play it down. Yes, you have pretty wings. You can see she's being very demanding of attention. Most cats and dogs, you know, they want your attention, but they're not demanding. Parrots have the ability to be demanding. And they put, they'll put their, like their pellets, their dry food or their wet food into their water to soften it, which is the craziest thing in the world because they've got these hook bills that are one of the strongest in all of birddom. <laughs> so why, I mean, I, my philosophy is they're keeping their bills, their beaks nice and sharp for any you know, possible need to bite kind of situation. And therefore, they put their food in their water, which brings the bacteria. I mean, it gets soupy, it gets gross. So you can't just put water out for a parrot. You have to really, really wash the inside of their bowl and really change them out. And I just don't find that my cats and my dogs, their water gets nasty. Maybe it's like a fish, you know, like if you never cleaned your fish tank, it would get nasty. But you don't clean the fish tank once a day usually. A little less, a little less. Where's my kisses? Where's my kisses? Where's my kisses? Kisses. Where's my kisses? Kisses. Kisses. Oh my. So, um, that's going to be a little harder. And the bigger the parrot, the bigger the mess. Parrots are also messy. In my experience, if you have a cat and a dog, you wind up with fur, you know, all over whatever room they live in. And it's sort of like this endless supply of fur. However, with parrots, they fly, and anywhere they fly to, they could poop, and they probably will. Plus, they take their pellets and their food, and they, they kind of do a great job of making a circumference, uh, showing, and maybe it's showing their area, but with their food. Um, our floors are swept every day, twice a day, if we can. And they're mopped regularly because you just, it's really hard to keep the floors clean and so we're constantly cleaning the floors. So super messy. Again, a parrot, that one's not super messy. Like if you were starting with a macaw, I'd be like, yeah, I don't think that's a starter bird. Emerald, you could start with, but she is gonna make a mess. So you're gonna have to go from cat fur around, you know, no big deal, just not that big of a deal, to you could potentially have to clean the cage and around the cage every single day. And it can get to be a bit much. So in addition to the sound, the demanding behavior, the messes that they make, parrots also require fresh vegetables every day. So now you're like preparing some food for them every day. How much and to what degree sort of depends on how many parrots you have and, and that kind of thing. But again, a smaller parrot is going to make a smaller mess and in that way it's going to be easier to start with. They tend to be able to take lettuces. So, you know, as long as you keep some mixed greens around, you can give them mixed greens every day with some shredded carrots. That's like fine, it's perfect, it may not be a big best array of different foods, but it is giving them fresh veggies and would meet those requirements. Whereas the minute you get into something like a hand macaw, you have to take into account the fact that she does require a little bit of nut fat. She's more like a conure in a lot of ways than a macaw. Yes, yes. Um, and a lot of that is because of her size, but she does require just a little bit of nut fat. She gets about a tablespoon of macaw mix every day. Um, and because of her size and everything, I would categorize her as a conure, maybe a bigger conure, or maybe a conure with a little more ability to do things, but that's sort of, you know, where she's at. In some ways, I think a handsome macaw is a great pet, just a great pet, um, <laughs> a lot of personality, a great companion in a smaller package than a regular macaw that's easier to take care of. But if you've never had a bird before, I wouldn't, like if someone came to me and they said, I've never had a parrot before, I wanna get a parrot, what should I get? I wouldn't start with suggesting a hands macaw. You know, I would ask them, what's your time? Like how much time do you have for a parrot? 
How comfortable are you with making fresh veggies? How comfortable are you cleaning their mess every day? And I'd go from there. And basically all of those things, you know, the time commitment, the cleaning commitment, the food commitment, they're all lighter on the smaller side of parrots. If you're talking about a lover, a budgie regard, um, a parrot leg, a cockatiel, and they're all bigger and heavier the bigger the parrot is. If you have any questions about parrots, please be sure to post below or um, send us a message and join our Facebook group at Parrot List Flock and we will try to get you an answer within a couple of days. Thanks for joining us in this flighty video about Emerald, my hand's macaw, and whether or not she's a first good pet. We will catch you next time.